I don't know. I really don't know. Um, there is nothing in the budget. I don't know how you get things put in the budget when budgets are being slashed. Believe me, if I knew, it would be there by now. <laughs> David Myatt, when he sees me walking down the hall, he jumps into the nearest classroom. <laughs> um, so there's nothing in the budget at this point. Susan and I are talking about the possibility in the future of trying to do something with art and ministry, but um, my, for myself, um, I've started a doctorate program at TST, and so my volunteer hours are much more limited. So, um, you know, we, we are going to have to find some funding if this is going to continue. Um, I, what? I, well, I just wanted to point out that what Deborah was saying about how they, she was talking about this big program of arts and theology and as an art department kind of thing, that's a way of saying it, that she's now putting that out into arts across the curriculum. I've actually done three courses here at AST in which I've been invited to do art. One of them is this formal one, and the other two happened before then, and the first one I took the course and I saw the curriculum and it said, one of your assignments, 30% a work of art. And I just went to the professor and said, fail me now. <laughs> um, and I absolutely loved it. And that's why I took this option with David's course. And the other course was Susan's course. And as part of our worship foundations, we were asked to do an aesthetic representation or aesthetic piece. And, and so I came at it almost the other way. The arts, it is happening. You know, we don't have to have loads of money, right? It is happening through just professors. Where are you all? Yeah, just, just, just to underline that, um, I think, you know, um, one of the things Deborah said was that these things evolve organically in different institutions in different ways. And um, incorporation into the curriculum is something that um, is low cost, um, but it's something which we can and, um, and will be implementing. Um, for distant students, um, for example, there is um, an online course um, in the winter semester called um, Theology of the Holy Spirit. And um, the final paper in that can be a final um, formal um, work of scientific theology or it can be an art project. Um, although we will be emphasizing um, electronic, electronically mediated arts. Um, and so within the curriculum we have inbuilt um, ways of of, of advancing the project and um, I think what we we'll probably try and do is I'll make up a list of the of the online courses that we'll be incorporating them and, and give it a particular designation where students can, can see and identify the courses that will have a coherent arts component and so distance students can avail of them in that, in that fashion. Um, I think that's a really good idea. I really do. I know that by the tone of my voice you know there's a but. <laughs> Of course we need more. When I first came here to do my MTS, I asked the question, why are there no courses in feminist art? Or, or sorry, no courses in feminist theology. I mean, really, why? A history of something. And uh, I was told it's because feminism, or a feminist theology, has been integrated into all the courses. Now, 20 courses later, I can tell you that's not true. It's just really not true. And so um, we have all kinds of courses out there that do not touch on feminist theology, theology courses. This will inspire David to do one now. <laughs> Historical <laughs> perspective. Yeah. Um, but I, my fear is the same thing will happen with the arts. If it isn't, it's, it's almost like, uh, what do you call that when you hire minority? What is that called? There's a term. What is it? Affirmative action, that's what we need. We need affirmative action for, for the arts, you know, so that they get represented. Otherwise, they are going to, I'm sorry to say this, but be sort of uh, float to the lowest common denominator because that's just what happens. What do you think? <laughs> I, 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 think, I think it's, I, I agree with you that it's problematic. They, 
that you do actually have to have an artist somewhere or it starts to fall apart. If you only depend on the accident of some of your students are artists and you don't have someone whose job it is to speak for the arts, it, it, does, it will dissipate. Um, and David, if you want to be the person whose job it is to speak for the arts as well as teach systematic theology, I suppose, <laughs> you know, you can. But you need to have someone who, who that's their mission. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a faculty member, although as I talk to people at other seminaries, if it isn't a faculty member, it's very difficult. If they don't at least have some faculty status. My friend um, Peggy Parker, Margaret Adams Parker, has been teaching as an adjunct at Virginia Theological Seminary, the Episcopal Cemetery, Seminary in um, Northern Virginia for 15 years as an adjunct, and she has no standing so anything that she wants to do there, other than this one credit course that she is invited to do one quarter every year, anything else that she wants to do is she's got to find somebody who will sponsor it, somebody who will say yes to it, somebody who will be her advocate among the faculty because she's just adjunct. She doesn't go to faculty meetings. She doesn't have any standing. And that's really hard. And yet, because she's there and because she's committed and because she lives three blocks away, <laughs> slowly, and because she just keeps pushing at it, but she's been pushing at it for 15 years and not gotten very far. Be so I don't want to say that, that just because somebody cares, that's enough. It, it's best if there's somebody that the school cares enough about to, to hire to, do, to speak for the arts. It's also the whole piece, the mechanism that you need for valuing it or validating. It's, a, it's an, ex, uh, an authentic way to express and to give ideas that have form and shape. And when it's not recognized as that, it's just seen as art and it's not valid. And I know I've been told, and I didn't know, for instance, that you, your courses will all be knocking on your door. And I'm a distant student, so it's harder. And Dr. Dean said, well, check my winter course. But I've been told this is a Master's of Divinity program, and we are accredited, and so we don't really interact with that kind of level of judging your work. So unless people like yourselves who are here, who have the inside power to say, well, yes, actually, I know how to do this, it won't happen. And there are more courses being made available. I know that somebody said they're doing the Theology of Play, which is going to be wonderful. But why not the Theology of Drama, Music, and Dance next summer for some students who want to do litur liturgical dance, you know, and we want to, you know, so anyway, thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, I just wanted to say that at the last board meeting, when we looked at the budget, there were many of the board members who were really upset and very concerned, the fact that there doesn't seem to be any more money, right, there isn't any more money right now, unless it is pulled out of other pockets again. Um, but, but I think that um, there's also a realization that this is one of the ways in which AST can be innovative and that we've got the potential to continue to work on this. And the meeting that I had to go to this morning was about um, op operationalizing our, our strategic directions. Mm -hmm. And um, that was one of the things which is on it. And we did talk a little bit about funding. It's, it's the money now that is the biggest issue, I think, rather than the acceptance of the art. At least that's, that's my interpretation. And I think there's enormous potential for us. And we've got, you know, we have an artistic community um, in all of, all of the arts around us that we can draw on. It's a question of, of finding the funding. And we were actually beginning to brainstorm a little bit about funding, although that's not the role of this, that committee. So it's going to be up to you know, everybody in the AST community to sort of um, to speak for it and to um, see what we can come up with. Um, but I think there's a lot of support from the board about this. 
And I also want to say that I did a feminist theology course in 1984-85. So there was one then. But that's probably because it was kind of new then. But it was it's, it's not over yet, though. Thank you, Margaret. Um, just, just one moment, please. I, I want to thank you for coming, Margaret, because um, we do need, and Jane as well, we do need um, people who have some power to hear us. Uh, no, I'm sorry, but that's what it comes down to. Um, the acceptance, I think, is there uh, at a sort of, a, you know, a, a fairly, what would you say? I won't say minimal, just slightly above minimal level. What do you think? <laughs> I'm hard on people. <laughs> well, I'm in a hurry. I can't live forever. Um, so it really is coming down to priorities, uh, where you want to put your dollars, um, where you want to invest in the future, all that kind of stuff. And uh, you've heard our, you've heard my plea often enough. So. And, and you know that when the is I do. I do. Okay, one, one second. My question is, Jenny, you're, you are here. I presume someone pays you a stipend of some kind. Someone pays you rent. Do they give you any money? Are you doing this all for free? things. Um, please um, contact us, email the committee uh, with ideas that you might have for directions that, uh, that we might take for fundraising, for programming, whatever. We would, we would love to hear from you um, as we try to garner support for the continuation of, of, of how this will manifest itself that we do not know yet. It's, but but um, please, um, you know, please email us your, your ideas and I'll pass it along to the committee. And then the second part of that, it, the second thing I have is, and just, I don't know if you can do this in a paragraph or two or three sentences, is in terms of the, um, the class, the, you know, the Wabash, uh, the, the, the project. Um, if you will, what were the benefits? What, what was what came out of that that would convince us, um, persuade us that this is a good thing? Um, one of the, um, there are core elements of Christian theology 
um, which are inherently paradoxical, um, which don't submit or, 